Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, whenever you're watching. Today, I am at Figueroa Mountain. All of that footage was graded directly with Dehancer. And I mean, you're probably wondering, like, what is Dehancer? Dehancer is a plugin that you can use for any editing software and it emulates the look of film. I really have to get into the history about this because it's really cool. So the story all starts back in 2014 when a man named Pavel Kasenko started this company um, and he really wanted to emulate the look of film. Oh, there you are. So he has managed to scan over 60 different types of film stocks and looks, not to mention all of the types of film grain, halation, bloom that you can use. It's absurd on how much stuff is actually in this plugin. So now that you guys know a little bit of the history behind this amazing software, let me go show you around. So the main editing software I'm gonna be using today is Premiere Pro, but keep in mind, you can also use this for Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve. Plus, they have an iOS app that you can use for video and for pictures. I'll put some pictures up on the screen right now to show you the results that you can get, which are really outstanding. It has the exact same settings as the plugin. So with that said, let's jump right in. Okay, so you can already see that I have some clips selected. Well, I've already colored this, that's why I have an adjustment layer on here, but always put Dehancer on the clip. Personally, I feel like this is the best workflow because, you know, in certain clips, there's exposure differences. So make sure to put that on the actual clip. So we're gonna go to effects. We're gonna type in Dehancer right here. Let's see if I can type it in right. Perfect. So we're gonna apply that to the clip. Okay. Now, first things first, you're gonna notice that it looks like crap. It doesn't look like an actual film stock because these are just normal settings that they've already applied to kind of give you a basic. So if I go down to film right here, remember how I was talking about how there's 60 different types of film stocks that you can go through? This is the setting right here. Look at all of this. You can go and check in any of these, get the look that you want, hone in that look. So, but the one that I'm gonna go for is Kodak Vision 3 250D. So we're gonna go back up, go into input, and we're gonna change, and this is where you would change, like let's say you had a camera and you can change this and it automatically changes the color space, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna leave that at Rec 709. So we're gonna go ahead and change the tint composition. Now, once you go ahead and change and change this, it's already gonna look a little bit better. Now it's gonna be on the cooler side of things, okay? So then we're gonna go ahead, change the temperature, change that back. Okay, it's a little bit more red, so we're gonna change that back. I'm already really liking that feel. So to better enhance your workflow, I would highly advise just copy and pasting these to the other clips. This just makes it easier so you have a baseline on the other clips. So the number two thing that I want to go over is the film compression. So film compression is more for the highlights and to kind of crunch down those highlights. So we're not gonna focus on that for this clip because there's no really highlights on this clip. But let's go down to film grain, okay? Because this is what a lot of people tend to use. So they have a whole bunch of different options. They have from eight millimeter all the way up to 65 millimeter. Um, I usually either choose eight millimeter, 250, 50 ISO, or I just do custom because I really like that grungy film look, just like in the first part of the video you saw it. That type of film that you find somewhere in a locker where it's been sitting forever. That's the type of look I'm going for. So we're gonna go ahead and just turn that grain all the way up. It's very easy to, to overdo it. So I'm gonna go ahead oh, and see that's a little bit too, you know what? I kind of like that. I kind of like where it's a lot of grain right there. So I'm gonna keep that. So next thing I wanna go to is halation. Halation is my most 
favorite setting on here because I'm going to use this on really like any clip that I use. So Halation mainly uses the highlights and uses edges of things to kind of give that kind of reddish tint. I don't know how to describe it, but there's something to do with the chemicals and how the chemicals react with the film stock on the certain edges and highlights of things. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in right here and it's best if I zoom in to really show you um, this. So we're going to go down to Halation and we're just going to turn this on to 35 mil and that really doesn't do a lot. I mean, it kind of does, but I really like to go to Super 8. That really, I love the Super 8 film look. So I'm just going to keep it at Super 8 and if I zoom out right here and if I just go out, unpause it right here, you can already tell that it gives that, you know, kind of red tinginess on the edging. Um, so let's say if I zoom in right here, if I go into 400%, you can see all of that edging right here is highlighted in a red tint. So if I go now, go over to Bloom, okay, I'm gonna fit this right here, go over to Bloom. You can also fiddle around with the Bloom. I have this disabled, let me go ahead and enable it, put this to Super 8. I really don't like the look that just Super 8 gives, I really like that blooming effect. So I am actually gonna go into custom. Okay, I'm gonna go into custom. Now, first things first, you're gonna go into save lights. It's set at 100. I usually go at about, you know, maybe 80 or so. Let me disable it and enable it. You can really see that it adds a difference, okay? So I'm gonna enable that back, okay? We're gonna add some film damage. So film damage is basically, you know, like in an old film where it has like, you know, spots popping everywhere and little hairs popping everywhere and stuff like that. That's what this is, okay? So we're gonna go down, we're gonna go to Super 8. Keep in mind, you can also go into custom tab for every single option. So let's say you wanted to have the dust amount set to 120. You can have the hairs amount set to, you know, 109, you can have a scratches set to this. And now if I go ahead and put this in full screen, you can now see that it adds all of those hairs and everything right there. We're gonna add posterized time. That basically cuts the frame rate for a certain clip so right here. Okay, now I'm gonna go all the way down so I can get the frame rate, okay? Now, usually Super 8 films at around 18 frames a second, so we're gonna do that. And let me go ahead and render this. I will be right back. Let me go ahead and render this out. All right, while that is rendering, I think it's a good time to talk about how you can actually get 10% off of Dehancer. Now, they contacted me and they really liked my style of video and they wanted me to review it. And keep in mind, this whole entire time, this has been my complete opinion. And they did not tell me what to do. They did not tell me how to do this video at all. This is completely my opinion. Um, and just like I said, you can get 10% off with my code Cody give 10 because you know I give that 10% off baby so with that said I think the rendering's done now let's get back to the video this is where this is optional um, I'm gonna go ahead and add some film borders I really really like this film border I will put the Google Drive link in the description I'm gonna put this on the one above right here and I'm just gonna copy and paste actually before I copy and paste let me go ahead and fix the scaling of this bad boy now if I copy and paste this along you can now see that it adds like a little film border over it just to add a little bit more color what we're gonna do or a little bit more pizzazz I should say is we're gonna add this boy over here to screen okay and I kind of like this rolling shutter copy this and just paste it along through here now, if I go ahead, and these first clips are not gonna be rendered, but you can obviously see that adds such a look to that. Look at that. Coming from what we had beforehand to now this, you can have so much fun with this freaking plugin, okay? And this is only like about 15 minutes of, you know, fiddling around. But what I was doing in the first part of the video that you saw, that took me quite a while to hone in the right look. You can spend hours, if not days, fiddling around with certain settings for a single video. So as you can see coming from, let me go ahead and disable all of these stuff right here. And now you can see the beforehand 
which is, you know, it's still really cool. The beforehand is, you know, that's really nice clips. But now jumping into after, this is what it transformed to. Look at how much of a difference that is and absolutely astonishing. All right, so I know I tried to expose for the clouds, but uh, it's a little dark, so we're just gonna have to deal with that. I really wanted to get into the pros and cons, and I'm gonna start with the cons first, just to get out of the bad news. Number one, mainly, is the fact that like right when you put that plugin in, um, it changes that hue and it changes that temperature. Um, it's not really that much of a big issue because, you know, like I said, if you follow the steps just by changing that hue tab and changing that temperature tab inside of the input column, you know, that fixes everything. It's literally just a two-step process. All right, and my number two thing that I really wanted to talk about that really I don't like is the fact that the basic and like the default settings for everything is jumped up to like a 12 okay most of the time you really want to like hone in those settings okay and when you use the default settings that they give you it, it might seem like it's just too much too much in your face the contrast is booted up it crushes all those highlights it crushes all those shadows too much so just be very wary maybe you might want to go to the custom tab a little bit more often to try to hone in some of your settings that you may want all right, so the last negative that I really wanted to talk about, and it's not necessarily a negative, but I did want to put it in the cons, is the fact that this really, really affects your computer's battery life if it's a laptop and or it's just really power hungry, okay? So like if you have a low end computer, um, just be very wary that it may buffer a lot. I have a MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip in it. So, you know, it you know breezes right through it, but just please be aware, it's not gonna break anything. It ain't gonna crash. They never had it any crashes with it just be mindful <laughs> so the pros about this amazing plugin are just the fact that you can use individual settings you don't have to go for a complete film look okay you can enable disable certain things right now i'm using halation and i'm using uh grain and all this shit but if i turn that off right now it just looks normal but if I turn it back on, it kind of gives it more of an aesthetic feeling to it. And I'm going to use this a lot. And I mean a lot in my videos. And the next pro is the fact that they have an actual iOS app for your iPhone. I'm not really sure if every single setting is in there, but I've been looking and literally almost every single setting from the plugin is inside of that iOS app. You can plug in any type of video, any picture, and just transform that into something remarkably beautiful, okay? So please go ahead. I already have the link in down below in the description. Click that, it'll reroute you to the app store. It's amazing, not even for me, but for you guys. And I feel like the main pro behind this app is just the fact that you can really turn your digital looking footage into something that's really vintage and looks like you found it from a basement, you know, for, that's been there for 50 years. And also, you know, sometimes film stock is expensive. You know, the Kodak 250D, a single roll is $50, 40 to $50, okay? So if you only want two to three minutes of film, that's $50 dollars along with the price of the film camera oh my it's just a lot of money so the fact that i can tone in the look to what i want and make it look either like a super 8 to make it look like a 35 millimeter it's not exact but it's close so with that, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It took me a long time to get all of the information and to edit this video. So please, if you liked it, give me a subscribe, give this video a like and comment down below what you want to see in my next video. Because honestly, it's really hard to come up with ideas. You know, I'm just one person. So if I could have a couple of you guys, maybe give me some ideas, I would love that. Okay. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. Comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.